Hi everyone, I am Maria and welcome to my channel. I am a marine biologist and today I'm going to be talking about five reasons why you should not become a marine biologist. Last week I already did one talking about the five reasons why you should, so you can go check that one out to find out why this job is awesome. No job is perfect, there are also downsides to this job and at least there are things that maybe people should consider before choosing it as a career. So let's start. First thing, competition. There are a lot of people interested in becoming marine biologists. I'm guessing you guys are. That's why you're watching this video. What this means is that when you are first entering the field, you will be competing with a lot of people, which means that you have to differentiate yourself from the others somehow, especially if you're looking for a paid job. And this is already in the beginning of your, of your career. There will be people dropping out the higher up you go in terms of career. However, there are still a lot of people who want to do this for the rest of their life. And while there are less people, there are still many more people applying for permanent jobs than the ones that actually exist. This holds true in academia at least, and I don't know for more like industrial NGO type jobs, how it is, but I assume these jobs are also not super abundant, especially if you are looking for something more stable and further, uh, uh, further on in your career. This leads me to my second point, unpaid work. Now, unpaid work comes in two ways. The one, first one, which is the obvious, is when you are first starting your career, because it is so competitive and because you have to differentiate yourself from the other people applying for the same positions, you will probably have to do a lot of volunteer work. That is probably the only way you can build up your CV and meet people and will and probably the only way you can get some kind of advantage in relation to your peers and to the people who are also applying for the same position. While having good grades is a good sign, that's probably not going to be the decisive factor in hiring you, hiring you for a job. That will be your working experience. And because usually all paid jobs in marine biology require working experience, you means that you will have to acquire that working experience in a volunteer-based job. There's a lot of research institutions, there are a lot of NGOs that accept volunteer work. I highly recommend you checking the internet for those kind of jobs. You have to go that extra mile while you are in your undergrad or even during, during your master's because that will build up your CV and it will differentiate yourself from the people who even might have good grades but have no working experience. There's another type of unpaid work that comes with this job which will carry on for the rest of your career. You will work probably many more hours than the hours that are in your contract and you're not going to be paid extra for that. I'm not sure if this is only reserved for academic and research jobs, but I have a feeling it's not. If you work in conservation, for instance, I'm sure you will also have to work many more hours than the ones you are paid for. This is kind of a very strange unwritten rule in science in which the hours in that are written in your contract, it really, does, really doesn't matter. You work as long as it's needed. Which leads me to my third point. It can be difficult to have a work-life balance. The difficulty in maintaining a work-life balance sometimes is due to external pressures like your supervisor, if you have one, or your boss, coworkers, deadlines. Sometimes you just have to travel a lot. But sometimes it's this difficulty also comes from yourself. Because of all the things I said before, because this field is so competitive and because you have to distinguish yourself throughout your career, you feel like you constantly need to work to be the best you can and you feel like you constantly need to create output. Obviously, in this case, I'm talking about academia, which is where I have the most experience in. But I think this is applicable to people who work in marine biology across fields, across places, because, as I said, it's a competitive field. So the external pressures will always be there. Those are the ones that you can't control. You can control how you react to them, which is linked to how you put pressure on yourself. And sometimes being able to pull yourself out of the working spiral can is not as easy as it sounds. 
sometimes you feel like you want to keep on working. If you want to have a family and if you have a partner, they have to be, first of all, understanding that there will be moments in, yeah, you can't, there's nothing you can do. You will have to work a lot because of things you simply can't control. There are moments in which is a bit dependent on you as well, and you have to be mentally prepared to deal with that. It is possible to have a work-life balance, but it's not necessarily easy. And it highly depends also in your environment and the people you're working with. Surround yourself with people who are mentally sane, please. <laughs> Number four, money. So no one told me I would have to be constantly thinking about money when I first studied marine biology. It's something no one talks about, or no one talked about at least during my, my undergrad until I started working in labs and understanding how much money plays a role in the life of a scientist. I think this holds true not only for academia, but for NGOs and any other place that does some sort of research. Funding usually doesn't go beyond three to four years. Once those three, four years are ended and once your funding is gone and the entity that was paying you stops paying you, you have no more money anymore. You're gonna constantly have to be thinking of how you are gonna get money for when your project ends. Which means while you are working on your current project, you will probably already have to be working on writing proposals for submitting for funding for the, the next project. This is even intensify it if your salary depends on it. If you are a professor at a university, you, your salary is fixed, right? So you're, you have a professor salary paid by the university. If you are a postdoc and your salary is dependent on the project that is funding you, once the project ends, your salary also ends. Only when you reach a level of professorship or assistant professor or a, a lab technician or some kind of permanent staff do you not have to worry about your salary. However, you still have to work, need to worry about funding because your salary is paid, but your research is not. Professors at universities have their salary paid, but if they want to keep on doing research, so if they need money for consumables, for traveling, for hiring more people, they still need to apply for projects because they still need money for research. I don't know if this is necessarily a con, it's just something which you should be aware of is going to be part of your life if you become a marine biologist. And this brings me to my final point, which is kind of a culmination of all the points I talked about before, which is instability. This is especially true early on in your career, uh, further on in your career when you already are in, uh, have an established position, well, you already have an established position, so it's not exactly the same. But early on in your career, you have to be ready to be very flexible. As I've just told you, projects usually are going on for no longer than two, three years. After those two, three years, when you are looking for a new project, this project might be in the, on the other side of the world. Because uh, you are dependent on these short-term projects and the money is not always in the same place, you will have to be extremely flexible in the beginning of your career and ready to move a lot. And for some people, this is not a problem. This comes a bit hand in hand with the work-life balance. There's a lot of people who really enjoy this lifestyle, but for some people, this might be a con. I, I've gotten messages of people telling me that they want to have a family when they are very young and they want to, you know, still be a marine biologist. You can do that, but you have to be aware that you might, if you want to really be, you know, committed to marine biology, you will probably have to move for two to three years somewhere else. Maybe your family can go with you. A lot of people I know have simply have partners who have flexible jobs and they are able, able of just going with their partners. It's something that you will probably have to face. There are those people, there are outliers that somehow manage to almost never leave the place where they were born until they get like a permanent position. They exist, but they are rare. Usually you will have to, you know, experience other labs, experience other countries, and it is actually encouraged. In science and in research, having international experience is encouraged. And if you don't, you're 
probably going to be have a harder time finding jobs. You have this instability of never really knowing where you're gonna be when the, your project ends. Now, some people really enjoy that and don't mind that. Some people really don't like it. This was it, guys. If you love the ocean, if you are put down by the five by these five things, go check out the five things why marine biology is awesome, and you know, consider whether those pros outweigh the cons because there's a lot of pros, let's be honest. It's a great job. But if you're hardworking, if you're passionate, if you love learning, if you love the ocean, if you're flexible, if you are someone who likes adventure, this job sounds about right. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for some people out there. I hope the combination in this and the five things that, that are cool in marine biology help you make some kind of decision if you are going through the process of deciding your future. Uh, yeah, I, that's it. If you want to watch more marine slash marine ocean related content, don't forget to subscribe, like the, press the like button if you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.